Ooh, double nosebleed. Now that's a sign that she's really fighting. What was that? We just cut the black and he's just okay. <laughs> oh, I think that's a it was a weird cut. Just cut to black and suddenly he's flying away. Thank you. Took you long enough. Okay, that's better than shit. That didn't work at all. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Aha! Hive mind idiots! Y'all get hurt! <laughs> Murray, saving the day for like pretty much everyone. You guys made a good choice in coming back here. You saved everything. Oh, there's a sword on the ground. I saw the sword! I didn't mention it earlier! <laughs> yes! Oh. <laughs> oh, that's badass. And also really ties into the whole D&D-ish. I don't know what to call it that this show started with. Okay, I have a new sense. This finale is going to have a cliffhanger of its own because it has to. Will there, will there people get trapped in the Upside Down? Maybe Steve won't die. He'll get trapped in here. That'd be awesome. I mean, it's not really the beginning, is it, Vecna? It's... We're on season four. Epic synth arrangement of the running up the hill. That's cool. Keeping the song going. Everybody doing it all at once. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> Burn, fool! <laughs> I don't know why, but whenever they do this and they take a pop song and just like make it epic, is it's just so flippin' cool. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh man, you couldn't have told me this was gonna happen. The Nancy Wheeler in the first season, that's for sure. Hopper, funny as Timmy Gorgon with a sword. <laughs> Ah, oh, shite. This is flippin' awesome. I look forward to the day where I can sit down and just watch this whole show all the way through. Yes! That's this shot. <laughs> Out the window! Am I to assume he's gone? Of course he is. This is horror movie stuff, right? This can't be easy. And of course, there's 40 minutes left in the episode. We're nowhere near the end. Oh, oh yeah, great. No, don't die into his arms. Shite. No, don't make... <laughs> that little speech was funny, but now it's sad. Come on, Eddie. <sighs> I knew you were going to die all the way at the beginning, but the second you were nice to Chrissy, but come on. Oh, come on. Nope, no tears, Freddy. Nope, nope. Hey, man, the music's gonna make me cry. Nope, nope. Hey, man. It still hurts. Doesn't matter how long I know what's gonna happen, it still hurts when it's here. No, 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 please. Oh, don't make her blind. Don't make her blind. At least let her see. Oh, come on. No, no, no. Don't you flip and dare. I'm not ready for this. No, no, don't do this to me. No, I'm not ready for two in a row. No, you weren't supposed to die. No, you were supposed to be fine. No! But she died. Which means the door is open. Four times. Shit. Shit. <laughs> oh, shoot! 
Basketball was brutal, yo! F you! Oh, and that's cool, under the water. Is... Are we gonna stop this? Or are we gonna end and, like, come back in the post-apocalypse? Because I can't tell with this show. Okay, um... Methinks Hawkins is never gonna be the same after this event unless we figure out time travel. Now, please tell me you can undo this. No. Yes! I don't know what You're not going. deus ex machina nonsense is going to keep you here. Come on, bring her back to life. Stop drawing this out. Two days later? You're going to do that to us, show. Ugh. <sighs> Okay, everyone's leaving. I'm assuming everything's destroyed, or the gate's still there. Okay, so we're going in with them as, as perspective characters, because they don't know what's going on here either. Well, whether the gate's there or not, Hawkins is gone. Well, okay, if everyone's out here, that means we're, the gates aren't there. Just a whole bunch of destruction. Or never mind, because everything's covered in weird, creepy vines. Ah, I don't know. Give me straight answers. An cult known as Hellfire. Ah, shit. Munson, the leader of this That's cult, still a thing. In the murders, has been missing since the earthquake and is presumed dead. Ah. <sighs> offers little comfort to the people. Damn it! That's the problem I had with Eddie Die. If he could survive, he could fight it. He could fix his name. But now everyone else knows him as a murderer. Mike, <laughs> you were, oh, you're glad to be home. You've been gone for ages. And Jonathan! Uh, I think Nancy might be happy to see you. Okay, I'm glad Steve's death was a fake out. Lives to die another day. Throat. Uh, shoot, what is she like? I know her arm's broken, her leg's broken. We could L at least, you know, save her sight. And almost everything else. Okay, I don't know if she's blind, but she's at least in a coma. Oh, it's nice to see the gang back together, at least at the very end. Okay, you're entering the mind again to see what's up in there. Everyone's stuck here. I mean, that was huge. What happened? The problem is... We still don't actually know the true status of the gates. We know it everything tore open. No one sees red glowing stuff, but do you want to attack It's my boyfriend, what was my boyfriend. Um and took one look at all this. Was He's an ex now. That leaves you a little bit of an opening, huh? Okay, which ultimately So you just broke up. That's fine. That leaves an opening. What's wrong with me? Um, Nothing's wrong with like you. Sometimes my mouth is moving faster than my brain. And it's oh, like come on. Now you two are perfect for each other. You can't not make this happen. Oh. Happy Steve. You were right. In the end. I was with him when the earthquake hit. <sighs> That's the best way to explain it. Where is Eddie now? Did you at least get his body out of the upside down? That would have been helpful. Nope. I guess that's a nope. But I'm glad you're telling his dad or uncle, whoever it is, because it's it would be terrible if he was just left on, hoping he was alive this whole time. They would have loved him. It's a great thing Even for him to hear, because the fact he is that he's going to be hounded again. by all this negative nonsense for the rest of everything. Despite because just of a few idiots and terrible coincidence. I never even saw him get mad. Oh, back here. Opera's cabin, which I do recognize now. <laughs> Unlike last time when we came here at night and it uh, looked like shit. something else entirely. This place is a total disaster. Come on, ah, guys. It just needs a little bit of TLC. Mike's room look worse than this. I mean, a lot of TLC. But we got water. 
Guys, be honest. Is this gonna continue or what? Yeah. Are we okay? No. You really yeah. need to talk. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah this. Totally. You need a hell of a conversation. Your your application letter. He didn't make Not it in. Not that it matters at all anymore. But did it ever come? No. No, Jonathan, don't lie. Not yet. Shite. He's lying. That means the relationship issues aren't gonna be done yet. Talk to you at all? Come on, Hopper. Um, Hopper and Joyce. I mean, they need to show up now to to really properly end this. In Hawkins. It's back, isn't it? Feel him. You can still feel the flare. He's hurting. But he's still alive. Yep. It's just strange. in case you thought the show was ending, it's not. It was this whole time, but Wait, I just and he's not going to stop. Is the mind flare Ever. its own separate entity from Vecna, or is Vecna in charge of everything? Everyone. Right. I just this is really we weird. Because they're calling Vecna his general, right? So will. did Mind Flare just say go attack them, and we Vecna's will. been controlling how they attacked him, or is Mind Flare like doing a little bit more? There he is, Hopper and Joyce. Oh shoot, that's right. We didn't get to see what was in Max's head. Is there anything in Max's head? That's what you found, nothing? Max! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now this is your papa. Not that fool of a printer. Ah, oh, this is good. Honestly, I have no clue what they've been put on a thumbnail at this point. Like, what do I choose? These two having their father-daughter yeah. relationship was a really unexpected twist in season two, kid. but it's so heartwarming. Well, what do you think? Yeah, we went to Russia. <laughs> Broke out of prison. <laughs> oh, honest, uh, all of them will have such interesting stories to tell each other. Like, oh yeah, we we flew a helicopter. We we crashed a plane. Oh, I took down a, a helicopter. Um, we went into the upside down. Yes, hugs. Everyone gets hugs. <laughs> oh, shite. Gotta ruin this, huh? Ash is raining down. The upside down has come to the real world. Downside up. Shoot. I was gonna start that really cool, then I messed up. Yeah, no, sorry, that, that portal of hell nonsense you were talking about. It opened. And... War. I would like a war. <laughs> oh, shoot. Everything's desaturating. I was right! Oh, ho, 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 ho! Ho, 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 ho! Oh, you did not close that at all! <laughs> it just waited two two days for a plot, <laughs> but oh, oh, that's awesome! Oh, look at that shot! It's flipping awesome, and they're gonna end right here, aren't they? And that was the finale, chapter nine, the piggyback. Now, if you know me and you've seen some of the recent videos, finales mean that I tend to ramble. Because my mind will just talk about anything and everything in no particular order. And I don't see why this would be any different. So, where do we start? This episode. Great episode. Honestly, it doesn't really... Shouldn't really be called an episode. It was a movie. It had the length of a movie. It had kind of the structure of a movie. And despite my complaints that some of the episodes of this season were unnecessarily long, I do agree that this episode, it had everything it needed to have. Now, do I agree with their assessment that there was no good point to cut it? I 
don't think so. I think that at that moment where everyone's low and everyone's in trouble, you could have cut it then and then like let that as a cliffhanger onto the next episode. But what do I know? I'm an idiot on a on the on a YouTube channel. But so the episode was cool. This battle with Vecna, where it's like despite their elaborate plan, he can read minds. So as soon as Max let him in, he knew what they were going to do. Everyone got trapped up. The only ones whose plan worked pretty well was Dustin and Eddie's part of things. The only thing they forgot was, well, they're just tiny little vents, convenient vents, the outside, which they missed. When things started going wrong, I really wondered, what is going to happen? What is an ex machina moment that's going to save the day? And that was Russia that came in clutch with the idea that since this is a hive mind, everybody feels the hurt. So them torching the hell out of the pieces of the Mind Flayer in, in Russia, or at least the smoke or whatever, uh, that hurt everything in and out of the Upside Down, which was a great. Then you got Eleven, who had that rousing speech from Mike to try harder and go on, and you know she was really using her power, because this time it's for, like, double nosebleed. And... She tore Vecna apart. He's not dead yet. Like a classic horror movie villain. They did a they shot him a whole bunch. They set him on fire. They pushed him out a window, but nope, he'll live to come back another day. About Vecna. I have to go into this tangent now. I already mentioned this a couple times during the thing, but I'm ever so slightly confused about his relationship with the Mind Flayer. In his flashback, we saw him as a person, uh, and as a very messed up person, kind of exploring the upside down, the primal upside down. It doesn't look like Hawkins yet. In fact, we haven't actually been explained why it looked like it looks like Hawkins. Did Will do it? Why the hell was at least this section of it reconfigured to look like the the opposite of this town? What it like? Does it? Is it the opposite everywhere? If you drove away from Hawkins, will you find like an opposite New York in the Upside Down? Or is it just Hawkins that's been copied? That hasn't been answered yet. But whatever, back to the thing. He walks through the Primal Upside Down and then he gets to this big swirling storm, which then forms into the Mind Flare. And we see that he actually drew the Mind Flare on his paper. Now, is that him? in his mind, seeing the Mind Flayer, right? He somehow connecting to the Upside Down and seeing that entity. And then when he walks up to it, he's like, oh, there's the entity, and it grants him power. Or is he finding the smoke, this source of energy, this general-ness, and is he the one who weaponizes it? I, you probably get what I mean, but... What's the pecking order here? Is Vecna the five-star general, like Dustin said in one of those early episodes? Or is he the Mind Flayer? Is he controlling the Mind Flayer? I, I don't know if I missed something and I'm missing that part of their relationship, or I just have to wait patiently for it to be answered. The epilogue was touching in that everyone finally got to, you know, meet back up together. They've been scattered across the world, really. They finally got to meet back up, and they're just... It just felt so good, you know, seeing these characters who've been missing each other the whole time. Just hug. I'm a big fan of hugs. And, you know, just ew, Nancy and Jonathan and Hopper and Eleven. It's just... <clears throat> And I think it's a powerful thing that all these characters are back together. The team is back together in Hawkins as the biggest thing ever is about to happen. And they'll really need to be together to face this one. Because I'm sure we've seen nothing yet. The upside down is coming to the downside up. <laughs> as for debts, Eddie was terrible. 
yes, I knew it was coming. I said it before, but still, it's heart-rendering to see him there on the floor. And what's worse is that memory of him. The fact that all those people will think that he's some kind of horrific person, that all the stuff that will now happen in Hawkins is because of him, right? It's just, it's unfair for people to remember that him, him that way. Only a few people to know what he was actually like and what he actually did, died fighting for. It's BS. It all happened because a couple of stupid basketballers were were pissed off. Then Max. They kind of undid her death. I don't know. It's in a state of flux because she's in a coma now, but she's heavily injured. And when Eleven went into her mind, they found it empty. Now, me thinks... No, no me thinks. Me knows. We've been described that Vecna takes in everything he kills. Everything becomes a part of him. Which means we can get Max back. Max is trapped inside Vecna. And we can get her back and put her in her body. I just really hope that by the time she does get back into her body, she isn't blind. I'll accept it, though, I guess. If everything else can heal up, a blind Max is better than a dead Max. Then Steve. He didn't die. Despite all the red flags, all the death flags, all season long, he's still alive. Now, were they just faking us out? Giving us some more Steve time? Maybe. Could he die? in later also maybe because i i heard something floating around about the fact that we should be ready for more characters to die next season i'm glad he didn't die yet and on the other hand though his very presence now makes the whole jonathan nancy thing much more complicated especially since in that moment where jonathan really needed to tell nancy the truth he lied and said that the college letter never came, which is stupid and caused the whole problem with him and her in the first place. They haven't addressed that issue, which means the issue will still exist in another relationship issue, Mike and Elle. Yes, they were on the rocks but uh, because of that argument, but Mike came in. He was the heart, as Will put it. And... You know, he gave the nice speech that empowered Elle. Now, on the other hand, for another triangle, we got another side of an, a second triangle, which is Mike and Will. Now, I've heard since the first season people talking about Will perhaps feeling having feelings for Mike. Now, I don't know. I can't say myself whether that was the original intention for the character this whole time. I am glad that even if it wasn't, they decided to go with it and they didn't hide it away. It was very clear this season, even if they didn't, you know, put it into words. If you didn't notice that, uh, you were just not paying attention. Uh, I said this too, but I'm never a fan of love triangles because there's always one person who's going to be hurt by the end of it. And Will is the unfortunate person in this case. He knows that Mike will always be with Elle. And he knows that he has to move on despite his feelings. And that's always unfortunate. Like, I know he will move on. He'll probably find someone great. Maybe not in this show, but I, I think he can survive. I think that he's on a list. Sure, he's on a list of people who could die in the in like the finale finale. But I think he could survive, and he could have a nice life. Uh, Lucas and Max, they were on. They were, we. They were also in trouble at the beginning of the season because Max was in heavy depression, um, and being messed with by Vecna. And, of course, Lucas was trying to be cool. 
So <laughs> they butted heads. But by the end there, they really reconnected, and it hurt. That, like, hey, will you go on a date with me should have been a sign, but I didn't take it. And we have to wait even longer for them to properly have, like, a happy get-back-together moment. They'll have that date. And another couple who has been promised a date, Hopper and Joyce. These two have been in a weird state of flux the entire show, as far as I can remember. It's like a will they, won't they, but they're adults, so it's not like the cliche rom-com kind of thing, or at least, you know, the teenage rom-com kind of thing. So it was like, it was always unsure, and then uh, she found a boyfriend, and he was actually way too nice, no matter how much Hopper disliked him. So, and he became a fan favorite character. I know I really liked him. Then he died to a demodog, which was a horrible thing. But it did leave it open for Joyce and Hopper to get together, and they finally did. They finally have... Well, they got close to it, like a happily ever moment. The after part isn't there yet, but they're happy for a bit. Okay, enough about people and relationships. I'm sure I met... I missed something or someone, but I can't put, drag this on too long. Otherwise, whatever. I won't drag this on too long because I nobody's watching this. I mean, come on. If, for some weird reason, you are still here, that you enjoy my content, could you just do me a favor and put a little comment down below? Just a small thing, just a hi at least, just to know that you're here, because that would make me feel really happy, honestly. Every time you guys comment at all, makes me really happy. So just a hi, if you don't mind, for anyone who's gotten to this point with me. Thank you, if you have. Continuing on with the structure of this episode, it, like I said, it was a movie structure. Everyone went in to do their own separate things. They all got to the climaxes at the same point. They had a downward, oh shoot, everything's doomed point. And then everything rose up as something or the other came in to save the day at the right time. And a nice driving force. Whether it's Lucas, like seeing Max and getting an extra blast of adrenaline. Or Joyce showing up with her zap stick. Mike with his speech. Everyone shows up at a good time to help save the day. then we f we fixed it. <laughs> or at least we thought we killed Vecna and we had a brief moment of woohoo and then it didn't have work. Max died horribly, sadly, and everything opened anyway. I'm again I'm really kinda surprised that it's a, just a weird cross that's just a cross. I seriously expected a pentagram. But, uh, I'm disappointed. A cross is still cool, but could you imagine if we had seen a giant star drawn across the city? But I guess that will be too, too on the nose. The whole season, I've been talking about the length of the episodes. I've mentioned it multiple times already, and yeah, a bit too long. You get my point if you've been watching me. You get it. I don't like the overly long, some of the overly long episodes. It just doesn't do it for me. But overall, I think this season was really cool. It definitely stood apart from every other season of the show we've seen so far, mainly because everyone was so split up. Everyone had to deal with such different things in different areas, even in Hawkins. It wasn't the usual, because they couldn't go to their homes or anything like they did in the past, they had to be on the run right alongside Eddie. They had to steal an RV to get around. They had to hide from the cops. It Nobody was in a position like they were before. And they since they were all split up, they had different challenges to face that could have been solved if they were all together. But it And, of course, it started off with that time jump in the first place. 
which was cool. I mean, it was necessary for one, because these actors are only getting older. But two, it was also cool because as much as a breakneck pace in shows like these or things are happening back to back to back to back to back to back is, is, is cool. Sometimes taking a break, letting these characters like breathe and just relax for a second before throwing another curveball at them is sometimes much more interesting for a story. And that was the case here. These guys got to relax a bit and they're like, ah, shite time for more nonsense to happen the part one part two split i understand why it needed to happen well actually i don't understand why i'm assuming there was probably editing and a lot of visual work that needed to do that pushed these last two episodes out and got them delayed compared to the rest but still when it comes to netflix you drop all the episodes at once I don't see why Netflix could have just bitten the bullet and waited a couple more weeks to release the whole show. Because after it's been years already, what, what, what's the point of like, oh, okay, fine, we can wait a little bit longer, but at the end of the day, it was cool. The season was cool. <sighs> I'm racking my brain here, and... I can't really think of what more stuff to say on individual episodes. Uh, the general story was... God, I don't have the word for it. But it was different and it was interesting because you finally tie the main villain back in ways that the previous seasons haven't. Previous seasons, they've just been monsters, and yeah, they've been in Will's head and all that, but it's just been monsters. Now you've got a very personal villain. You've got someone who's deeply rooted into Eleven's ba- Eleven's um, you know, background and history. More than that, he deeply roots himself into your past, your memories. He makes things personal. And he can talk to you in ways that the previous things haven't they've kind of just roared and every single time something bigger or more destructive is just screaming this guy can talk to you he can taunt you and i I love that i love having a more like person villain someone to actually counter them more intelligently the last thing i'm going to talk about is any theories i have for the future for the next season After this finale, I can only think that season five is going to be the end of Stranger Things. If it isn't, I'm surprised. If we already know whether it is or isn't, I I don't know. I'm sorry. But you can't just end like that with the town like burning, the upside down, creeping through, killing everything. It's like... You don't end that and somehow top it with another season after. I think season five is going to be the final confrontation, the war that I desperately want to see. Uh, I hope we can see some new monsters. We saw Nancy specifically said something about like a giant gaping mouth, which I'm very sure is a hint for something, a new monster, monstrosity. I want to see the town getting into it a little bit. It's like, yes, these guys have carried it all for a while now. And yes, there's some government entities helping. Yes, there's Sullivan, which we actually surprisingly didn't see this episode, who also wants to hurt and get in the way and be a Dumbo. But it would be really... I think it would be a really empowering moment to have Hawkins actually, like, band together. After all, we saw a lot of cars leaving, but a lot of people are still there. So I think they could. I think we could see, like, everyone rallying in. Because that would be flippin' amazing. And especially, like, you could see the parents finally, like, understand, like, oh, shoot, there's Mike fighting a Demogorgon. Oh, okay. Stuff like that. 
would be amazing to see. I also don't know don't know how long the next season can be. Like how the only thing I can expect is maybe despite us looking right now and seeing the portal smoking and all everything kind of shedding and like dying nothing will actually come through for a while i don't know because i think i've also heard stuff about a, another time jump between season four and five which means despite the cliffhanger ending here nothing is going to come through for a while things are just going to stay static which is slightly we weird when you compare what's been seen here but i don't know or maybe they're going to trick us and we're going to start the next season in like a post-apocalyptic hell. I never got into Stranger Things initially. It wasn't my show. When, everyone, when it first came out, a lot of people were obsessing over it. I didn't get it. So I kind of just stayed away. It wasn't until later when, I think close to when season two was coming out, that I decided, what the hell? Let's give this a try. And so me and my sister just kind of cuddled on the couch and decided to watch this together i thought it would be more scary especially she was kind of younger too so we kind of had a blanket my point is i didn't expect this show to be as good as it was i didn't expect this show to be as amazing as it was and here we are years later finally season four it has been amazing i didn't expect to be sitting in front of a camera and maybe a few people watching who knows? Either. But, hey, you never know what life will tell you. You never know where life will take you, and you never know what's going to happen next. For anyone who is sitting here and who has watched all my reactions so far on Stranger Things, thank you so much. I really appreciate every single one of you. You make me feel like I'm not a madman in front of a camera. Thank you so much for watching. What was your favorite part of this episode? What was your favorite part of this season? Over here is whatever YouTube decides to show you. Over here is a place to my videos. And on my face is the subscribe button. Like, comment, subscribe, criticize even. I don't mind. See ya.